All right, the last thing I want to do is go back and compare the idea of the average rate of change to the instantaneous rate of change. So here we have our function f of x equals x squared plus x. We're asked to find the average rate of change of y with respect to x in the particular interval. So remember that when we're talking about average rate of change, we're given two points along the curve and we're asked to find out what is the, uh, the slope of the secant line, of course, between those two points. So in order to do that, we said we would have to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That basic idea of our slope. So if I know that x equals 2, then what is the corresponding y value to that? Okay, so if x equals 2, let's plug a 2 into the function. That's 2 squared plus 2. 4 plus 2, we get 6. So we get a y value of 6. Um, if x equals 3, then what is the y value? So we'll just go ahead and simply find the y value of that point. So there would be 3 goes in, we get 3 squared plus 3, that's 9 plus 3, we end up with 12. So the slope of the secant line, we said was just basically the slope between the two points using that old-fashioned formula. So I'm going to call this um, my x1, y1, and I'll call this x2, y2. Okay, so um, I have 12 minus y1, which is 6, divided by 3 minus my x1, which is 2. So I'm going to subtract the y values of the two points divided by subtracting the x values of the two points. We end up with 6 over 1, so we end up with a slope of 6. So I would like to also show you kind of a picture of what we're actually doing here. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to a program called Desmos. So I'm going to go to our website right here. Um, if you go to desmos.com, you can actually uh, pull up this free graphing calculator and you can observe what happens here along the curve. And I'm going to put this also in D2L. You have access to this in D2L. And you can actually click on this and kind of play around with the idea of the slope of the secant line. Um, I'm going to set my A value to be 2. Okay, that's our point, kind of our value, x value in question. I'm going to kind of scoot the graph down a little bit. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit too. Okay, so there's our, our point on the curve, 2 comma 6. Um, what we're actually looking at in this problem is what is the slope of the secant line between two points, um, and the horizontal distance um, is going to be 1, so between x equals 2 and x equals 3. So I'm going to make that horizontal distance, that h value, to be exactly 1. This little formula right here calculates the slope and tells us that our slope is 6, which is nice. So we're actually looking at the slope of the secant line between those two points. So what we're kind of trying to get to is the idea of the slope of the tangent line at exactly x equals 2. Well, in order to do that, I would like to shrink the horizontal distance. I would like to make the horizontal distance approach 0. So for the next problem, the next little calculation we're going to do, I'm going to shrink that horizontal distance down to be a half. So I'm going to make it to be 0.5. All right, oops, 0.5. So I'm getting closer to that idea of the tangent line at 2 comma 6. That's my goal. So it tells me here that my slope is 5.5. And let's just go back to our problem and see that that it will be true. So if x equals 2, we know that y equals 6. What is the y value here? Um, if I plug a 2.5 into my function, Okay, so let's see what the y value is. We're going to plug in a 2.5 into the function. So we get 2.5 squared 
plus 2.5 and put that into our calculators and see what we get and I get um, y equals 8.75 so the slope of the secant line that contains them would be let's use this as our y2 x2 y2 so I get 8.75 minus the y value from the first point 6 divided by I get 2.5 minus 2 and I get um, in my calculator I get 2.75 divided by 0.5 which gives me a final slope of 5.5 all right so if I shrink that horizontal distance between x equals 2 and the next point to be 0.5 then I'm getting closer to the slope of the tangent line that I want all right so we're gonna go even further I'm going to shrink that horizontal distance. I'm going to pull those x values really close together. So I'm going to choose uh, 2.1. What is the y value for 2.1? So I'm going to plug 2.1 into the function and see what we get out for that y value of that point. Okay. And 2.1 squared plus 2.1, I get out uh, my calculator 6.51 for that y value. So we'll calculate the slope of the secant line there, and I get 6.51 divided by or minus 6 divided by 2.1 minus 2. So I get 0.51 divided by 0.1. So I get a slope of 5.1. So what we want to observe here is that as we choose an x value that's closer and closer and closer to 2 that our slopes are getting closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. So we start out with a slope of 6, we move to 5.5, and then we get 5.1. What does it look like the slope of the tangent line would be? What is the slope getting closer and closer to? It looks like it's approaching a slope of 5. Okay. Now once again, I want to observe this on Desmos to see what we just did. So I'm going to pull this up. So we went from a slope of, uh, for a horizontal distance of 1, is here. So from a horizontal distance of 1, we started with the point x equals 3. And then we said we we're going to shrink that down to be a distance of 0.5. Okay, so we chose this point here. Calculated our slope. Familiar numbers there. So let's get even closer to that x value of 2. Let's choose 2.1. So we're going to choose something really, really small. Um, and so you notice that our secant line is getting closer and closer and closer to the idea of a tangent line. So it looks like our, and I'm going to come way back out here again and start. So it looks like, notice what's happening to my m value. It's 6.37 now. Notice what's happening as I'm shrinking that horizontal distance and I'm making it smaller and smaller and smaller making those x values get closer and closer together. Notice that my slope is getting smaller, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to a five, to an actual value of 5. It looks like it's approaching 5. Okay. I can't get any closer because then my, um, the points would coincide, and I get h equals 0, and then I get something undefined. Okay, but it looks like we're getting closer and closer to that value. All right, now let's actually calculate what we suspect. Let's actually calculate the instantaneous rate of change or find the slope of the tangent line at exactly uh, x equals 2. So uh, let's go back to what our function was. It was uh, x squared plus x. So let's calculate the derivative. So that's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So it's the limit as h approaches 0. All right, so f of x plus h. Let me write our function here. All right, so let's write our function out with parentheses first. So when I do that, I'm going to put x plus h in the parentheses and square it, add that to x plus h. Then we said we're going to subtract off the original function, so I'm going to say minus x squared minus x. So all the terms in that original function are going to change signs, and then we're going to divide that by h. So the limit as h approaches 0 of. Let's, uh, let's square that binomial. We get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. 
And then, of course, nothing happens with that one, so we just end up with plus x plus h. Subtract off x squared minus x and divide by h. Let's get really fast at this. x squareds cancel, minus x and positive x cancel. And let's actually go ahead now and just do the division. Okay, so h goes into 2xh, we get 2x. h goes into h squared, we end up with plus h. h divided by itself is 1. Okay, so be careful there. h divided by h, anything divided by itself is 1, so we get a term of 1. Now we want to calculate the limit as h approaches 0. So we're going to substitute 0 in place of h. Okay, so we get 2x plus 0 plus 1, which of course reduces to 2x plus 1. So our derivative, 2x plus 1. Now what we're, what we're looking for is what is the actual slope of the tangent line when x equals 2. So to actually find that slope, remember that I'm going to take the x value of the point, which we said was 2. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. So we're going to plug a 2 in because that's the point at which we're interested in finding the slope of the tangent line. So I'm going to plug the x value of 2 in to my derivative formula, or to my slope formula there. I'm going to get 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1, so we end up with a slope of 5. So let's interpret our results now. This tells me that the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line, is 5 when x is equal to 2. Okay, so this is important. All right. The one last thing that I want to mention very quickly is some things that can happen when we actually find our derivatives. Um, in order for the derivative to exist, um, we have we said the double-sided limit has to exist. We also need what we call smooth and continuous a smooth and continuous curve at that particular given point for which we are trying to find the derivative or to find that slope of the tangent line. So, I want to look at a couple of examples of some interesting things that happen sometimes when you're finding your derivative and you're finding the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. Sometimes when we look at a particular point, the tangent line turns out to be a vertical line. And for a vertical line, the slope is undefined. So sometimes the slope will be undefined for a particular point. So we want to keep in mind what that implies. That implies that we have a vertical tangent line. Okay. Um, the graph also could make an abrupt change at that particular x value and then that would force the derivative not to exist. And why would that be? Well, as we approach from the left, it looks like from the left, the tangent line would look like this. But as we approach from the right, it looks like the tangent line would actually go in the opposite direction. So as we approach from the left and from the right, we actually do not end up with the same tangent line. So therefore, if the right hand and left hand limit don't exist, then the derivative of course, will not exist because we need that limit, the double-sided limit, to exist in order for the derivative to exist. So the derivative does not exist there. So we have some interesting situations that might occur. Um, for example, here I have a curve, and I have calculated the derivative for this cube root function. And we want to know what happens at x equals 0. What is the tangent line and what is the slope of the tangent line at that point. Well if I plug in a 0 into my derivative formula and don't worry about how we got the derivative right now just kind of showing you a quick little example. We end up with 0 squared which is 0, cube root of 0 is 0, 3 times 0, 0. So we actually end up with something that's undefined. If the derivative is undefined what that's telling me is that at that particular point I might just have a vertical tangent line. Okay, so we want to kind of be on the lookout for instances in which our derivative does not exist or which our derivative um, turns out to have an undefined slope.